Okay. Okay. So what were you saying? I was saying that a person can get into heaven by accepting God, Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And right, but I was saying that I believe that oftentimes church can complicate. Like it, church can complicate the 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 real stuff. Like, the real stuff is getting into heaven. Like, I believe that there's going to be a lot of people who get in heaven that don't go to church. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because church really so, starts. So, therefore, the question is, why do you go to church? For me, I go for a different perspective of the word and exposure to the word in a way that I would not normally get. Just on okay. my own. <clears throat> okay, the word. The word. The okay. word. Okay, see, I believe that a lot of... I don't know, it just seems like sometimes, not just church, but I'm saying church metaphorically. A lot of things, especially like when you're talking about church... There's a lot of people who go to church. Well, I, I, like, what'd you just say? You said church begins after, what'd you say? Church begins really after you leave. And that's exposing the goodness of living a life, you know, of love. And you could be... See, because there's a lot of people who go to, a lot of people who go to church are doing some effed up things. Yeah, it's ridiculous, and it's not a good representation of God. And at the end of the day, people who go to church that leave church and don't live even one principle of what Jesus really is, I don't believe those people go to heaven. I don't. Not if they die, and you can die at any moment, unfortunately. And they could be in leadership. They don't. They could just be there just to be there because it's a habitual thing. But at the end of the day, when you are throwing stones, not literally, but at your brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't think that those people get to heaven. I think I think God puts them on another pedis- on a higher pedestal of responsibility. See, I believe the only way that you get into heaven is more so just right and wrong. Yeah, I agree. Like, there's no do's and don'ts. Like, when you, most people are more so concerned about what they know about God, what they know about the Bible, as opposed to, are you doing good or are you not doing good? Are you doing good things or are you doing bad things? Right. Like, where's the platform for that? Church doesn't talk about that. And most spiritual leaders don't talk about that. Like, it, what is really, like, what is really church? Like, do I need another story? Do I need another scripture to know that if I shouldn't, let's say, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, look, okay, yeah, you want to use gossip? Let's use gossip. God hates gossip. Hates it. I don't, see, now that I don't know, but do you need to go to church to know that? No. I think, you know what? You just gave me a great thought. I think that people who go to church need to focus on if God or or Jesus decided to make a new Bible, that they actually live a life worth putting into a book. See, again, that's so complicated. That's not complicated because that's just like David. I mean, David was... God loved him, and he just See, that really sounds too. Stuff. That sounds so Steven Spielbergish. Like you have to go, you know, you have to. That, like, that sounds like a big production. It could, but that's what life is. Life is a. And no, it's not. It's really life not. To serve and to help others. It's yourself. really, really not. It really boils down to good and bad, right, right and wrong. Right. 
And when you do lots of good and when you do lots of bad, that's a movie. Like, <laughs> like for example, today I almost littered, right? And I Same littered, body. I littered, and then I walked away. But then I came, I, I, the whole time I was walking away, I felt so bad. Like, yo, am I really, like, did I really just do that? Like, I can, there's going to be a better time where I'm going to really need to litter. Why use this opportunity right now to litter? So I walked back, maybe about 50 feet, I walked back, and I got the thing, and I kept it for a lot longer than I probably should have, where it was very uncomfortable. Okay. See, that's worth talking. That's worth being a movie. See, people. But that's I don't need. But why aren't why isn't things like like what if that was? See, that's what I'm saying. There's so many things that gets. It, it's a lot of complicated things when it comes to life. But that's it. That like that moment of me littering. That was just right and wrong. Like, oh, man. And I knew it was wrong. Like, as soon as I did it, I was like, damn, that's wrong. But still, I still did it. I still walked away. I was going to go on with my married life. Nobody saw it. Right? God saw it. There you go. Yeah. Okay. But my point is, see, I didn't even have to do anything with God. But, yeah, I didn't need God. God. Not not one point in that littering did I think about God. All but I thought about was right and, and wrong. And then your ass turn around and go get that. <laughs> there you the go. God it, is you. Okay. There's the complication. Okay. Well, let's simplify. I believe in God. I know he exists. However, I don't need to call on him, nor do I need him to help me not litter. Okay. But at the same time, what it, to simplify it all. Because what about the person who doesn't believe in God? Okay, well, the person who doesn't all, believe in God, there is no God within them that in, in their same scenario of littering, they don't, what, what, how do they get this? How do they go back and right their wrong? See, I think God is a forgiving God, but God is not a fool either. But I think that Yeah, but you're only seeing did. one side of it. You're only seeing God. <laughs> no, There's see, I people, God, I have friends that don't believe in God. But yet, they know the difference between right and wrong. Are they going and to if you're, you, you said if they don't know no better, they will, as long yeah, as they're no, good no people. Better, they're still good people, and they're, you know, not serving the devil, you know. Of course, I think that they will go so, to heaven. There you go. But why, be, but why, why not be safe and sorry? Like, why, be, why risk... If if you know and you're still going to be a good person, that's where I have the confusion. Like, Nobody's preaching good and bad. The only way religious people preach talk good and bad is when they try to put the fear of God in you, which you should have if you believe in God. But at the basics of just life, hey, you shouldn't push that old lady down the steps. <laughs> now, that has nothing to do with God. You shouldn't, hey, you shouldn't be stealing money from those people. <laughs> hey, you don't need God. That, like, look, we're, we don't need to talk about God right there. Like, there's no need to bring up God in that situation. We should be able to have a very serious, intimate, impactful conversation about that without even bringing God up. Like, look, you shouldn't steal. That, that, you shouldn't steal things that are not yours. Now, are there times where you are going to steal? Great. You know, you should be able to know that without bringing God into the equation. That's oh my, that's my only point. You lie? Hey. Well, uh, God don't like lying. No. <laughs> what about you? Just, is it good or bad? Before we bring up God... Like, that's like the uh, tithe and offering. That's why they don't ask for the tithe and offering as soon as you walk in when service starts. They got to warm you up. Like, before we talk about God, there should we should be responsible in a sense as human beings. 
And besides the fact that a lot of people, you got to be careful who you're talking to. Some people don't believe in God. But that doesn't mean that they're let off. Well, if you don't believe in God, you know what? You can lie. I mean, hey, <laughs> you can gossip. You can do all these things. Oh, you don't believe in God. Well, that's why you do it. See, now if you knew God, you wouldn't be doing that. Well, no. Well, I think it is a such thing as common sense. Like, not common sense, but just, I think moral morals and principles are different than following God. I think that's just the human nature of us. I think the spiritual side is even different, but I just think that it's a choice between hey, okay, like people in business sometimes say, all right, I'm going to join your business. I want to be a partner. And you have a choice. You can do it by yourself or you can get this backup, this blueprint that we already have in place that's already written out, this is the result. It might I take guess. you longer, it might take you shorter, it might take you quicker, it might make you better. You might get there before your other partners, but at the end of the day, if you follow this, we are saying, he's saying that this is the result, period. You want me to... See, to now, like, enemy? you know what, that, that guy, Perfect. Hawk Newsom... The guy Hawk Newsom, he has a quote on his page. Um, I for, I'm not, I can't, I'm going to summarize it, but he says something like, Christians, how can a Christian be a racist? No, he cannot. Now, that I it's don't something know. like that. Something yes. he words like that. And so He's the point is, remember, though. do you know that the Ku Klux Klan is a Christian-based organization. Yes. I didn't know that. Like, I don't know. I would have never imagined that they have that, like, on the It's website. like Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, everybody knows it's a Christian-based restaurant. Right? Mm -hmm. Ku Klux Klan is Christian-based. Yeah, that's sick. So, yeah, if it's Christian-based... Look, what happened to uh, September 11th? The, the the people flying through the plane, they did that in God's name. They did that for God. <laughs> so what I'm saying is God and spiritual and religious, it sometimes gives people a pass to do wrong things. Whereas you say, hey, you know, flying through that plane and killing innocent people, that's pretty, that's bad. <laughs> Like, well, wait, wait, no, let's not talk about God right now. But look, you're going to take a plane that's not yours. There's a lot of wrong in that before you even should talk about God. And I believe if you're so into God and religious and, and whatever the thing is, like I said, church and, and God and religion, that's all just metaphorically. It goes across the board. But sometimes we, we rush to God too quickly. This moment is not about tap water, nor your favorite bottled water. This is about alkaline water. Call a distributor today to discuss finance options. 1-800-660-9431. Change your water, change your life. Now back to your favorite podcast. And we rush to religion and spirituality too quickly. Sometimes we need to just talk about, hey, that's wrong. Right. No, that's wrong. It's wrong to use God's name, but that's just like some people would say that they, you know, are affiliated with such and such. And it's not true, but they just say it because they know that that name makes, it has clout. And I don't think God is any different. I think no, it don't have no clout. It gives space. Right, it it's gives like it's like to pepper make you spray. Feel like you're okay to the wrong to the wrong person. Okay. To the wrong person, God's name is like pepper spray. It just gives you space to do right or wrong. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah, is the but I think sometimes people use it. You know what I mean? That's just like the the church that is a church, but they don't really serve. Like, 
and I can't explain it, but you just use it for to make you feel guiltless. You know, like the Ku Klux Klan, if they include Christian uh, saying that they're a Christian based and they hate another human being, they use that and they don't know God. They have no clue who God is. They are completely confused who God is. And, they might and therefore, they're health. left out of our society. See, mental health. You don't believe in God. You need mental health. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's impossible to be a to live off the principles of Jesus and to look at a group of people for the color of their skin and hate them. I don't think they should be banned from society. I just think that they shouldn't be considered Christian. They don't understand what a Christian is. That's not what a Christian is. Christian is love. Jesus loved the people. See, I believe religious people, no matter what the denomination, I believe just like, I believe every once in a while you should get examined. If you're a Christian, Muslim, um, what, what's the other ones? Catholic. Every once in a while, you should have to go through, like, because what do you got to do? Get baptized or whatever? You should have to go through the process again. Kind of like when old people get too old to drive and they got to, you know, they don't want to give up their license. Yeah. Like, there should be some of that with if, if it's going to be this big deal. Well, but in my you, opinion, are you yourself a Christian or no? Am I a Christian? Mm-hmm. Um, what is a Christian? A Christian is a person who believes that Jesus was their Lord and sa- Savior. Their Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ. They claim him to be their Lord and Savior. He's my Lord and Savior. No, I'm not a Christian. That sounds. He died crazy. on the cross. I don't like. Well, like Les Brown said, he said labels belong on jars. That's what he just said on my podcast. <laughs> like, yeah. So the same way when you try to say I'm a vegetarian or you're trying to be a vegan, like, no, I just happen to not eat. Turkey, chicken, pork, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not a vegetarian or vegan. That's too heavy. It's too much of a responsibility. It's like, are you a dad, a father? Yo, call me whatever. I help and take care of this person. Are you a mother? Like, um, yeah, I'm a mother. Like, I mean, okay, whatever. All I know is I take care but of my kids. But do you think that sometimes title or labels give clarity? Like, imagine if my... Yeah, in the military... Imagine if my seasoning cabinet had no labels. Like, how do you know when the Cuban... What's pasta, more important, the responsibility or the, the purpose or the title? But I think... See, a pilot doesn't need to be... Title. A pilot doesn't need the name of a, of a pilot except to get through security. And to, you know, where his spot is. If you know your position... They get the keys to the plane. You got to know your role. You're considered a pilot. Yeah, but if you, but I think nah, that, doing and taking the responsibility. There's people with. The is title. there more? What's more important, the label, or the job? The job, of course. But I think when okay, you do your so job the, well, and you get without a, the label, can I do the job? Yes, of course, you can do the job hey, without the label. With, without <laughs> without the job. Without doing the job, can I get the title? Mm. No, and not in most cases. There you go. Mm. So you while they're fighting, you think about while, the, while they're fighting about titles, they're, they're, our society is becoming so big on titles and labeling that we forget about. The actual, like, here, here's some real shit. Like, you want something real? Like, what if under all of the charades and shenanigans, what if Donald Trump was actually doing a really good job? Um, 
Like with, with like real stuff, like under the surface. That like, what if he was doing a real job? <laughs> I'm not I saying he is, nor do I believe. It. I'm just saying, would it? Yeah, I think that that would be unfortunate. That, but I do. It wouldn't be unfortunate, nor would it matter. Because no, when you're doing a job, all that matters is the job. You can stink. You can smell dirty. You can look dirty. You can dress however you want. But if you're getting the job done. But I think when you do it well, the title, like, there are some mothers who have their children, but they're not good mothers. But they're but it's not mothers. that they're not good mothers. It's that they're, they're not doing the job. Mm, okay, I got you. All right. But do they lose their title when they're not doing the job even though they birth children? Say it again. Do they still get the title or deserve the title when they're not doing the job? You can't really deserve a title. A title is... What is what called? Like, I'm a, I'm, I have to, you know, I'm a mother. If I didn't take care of my, my sons, would I, I would still have the title though. Yeah, you'll have the title of someone who doesn't take care of their sons. But I'm still a mother. And that just happens to be a bad mother. So I do get a title. It's not just mother. It's a bad You don't mother. get one. You're asking for one, and that's just what it is. We need titles and things like that to identify something or someone, but that's not the most important thing. And some people are just so hung up. You got to say, hey, I'm the preacher, so you got to do it this way. That's what, look at what happened in Hollywood. It's, hey, I, I'm, I'm this, I, I, I'm the Charlie Rose? Charlie Rose, somebody I've been, admiring his work. Charlie Rose now? Mm. Well, let me ask you Hey, this. you do if this you for me because I have this title. You do this for me, and because of my title, I will get you this. Okay, no, what about the people... What about the people who have been on record, like, at the massacre at that school, the, I think the most famous one, and he and and those people who says um they put the gun to the lady's head and said, Do you still believe in Jesus Christ? They said yes. Mm-hmm. And he shoots them. Mm-hmm. And blows their head off. Mm-hmm. They get to heaven and they say, mm-hmm. Jesus says, You know what? You definitely are in the gates because you still proclaim in the faith and death. Okay. And then you get to heaven, and he says, well, if you said you weren't a Christian, so sorry. Then what? What's the last part? And what if the person who lived, who believed in the life of what a, the definition of what a Christian should be, believed in the title, but did not accept the title and did not get into heaven? I don't know. That sounds very complicated. But if I could say the same scenario without using God or anything religious, I would say a person would, that person who said, do you believe in God? Do you still believe in God with a gun to their head? I believe, yes, they should get into heaven, not because of anything spiritual, but because they told the truth. That was their truth. So if you say, no, I don't, when you have a gun to your head, if you say, no, you don't, then you lied and then you died. (laughs) And therefore, if you lied right before death, you can't ask for forgiveness, you can't ask for grace or mercy before you die. Yeah, the last thing you did was you lied about one of the most important things you believe in. But what if you said yes and, and you didn't believe it? Then again, you lied. You lied, yeah. (laughs) Okay. 
I could see that. Yeah, Even so it's so, important. I do still think titles are important. Titles are important, especially when you're buying a car, right? Can I get the title? Yes, <laughs> you need the title. You don't want to buy a, a car without the title. You're buying a house. Right? You need the title. You're buying a piece of property. You need the title. You're starting a new business. You need the title. Yes, that that is important. But do you know how many people buy titles and buy houses and buy cars and there's liens against that property? What's the right. lien? The lien is metaphorically the work and the stuff that nobody knows about. And you know how many people gotten screwed because they got the title? They, Say, oh, you got the title? Yes, I have the title. Here's the title. All right, well, here's all this money. And then they get the they get the house. They have the title, title, right? And now they got a all this mess that came before the title that was more important than the title. Mm. So what's more important there? Is it still the title? Uh, no, it's the stuff that leads up to the title. Right. I'm not saying a title is not important, like I said before, to repeat and simplify. I'm saying the same exact thing, right? A title is important. We have to identify something or someone with a title. That's how we identify things. Right. But the things that make up the title is what's most important. Right. That's true. That's, again, metaphorically in the church. Can you imagine a church <laughs> asking for the tithe and offering as su- before they even start the service? <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you for coming. We want to just go ahead and... Most people wouldn't give. Most people wouldn't give. Why? Because there there needs to be a buildup, right? They need to be able to sit down. They want to hear a scripture. They want to hear announcements. They want to hear a song, right? And then, hey, we'll... Okay, now this is enough. You're here for, (laughs) okay, you're here for some entertainment. That's really, churches in a sense, it's basically entertainment. In a sense, it's entertainment. There, Otherwise, there would just be a message. Come get this message. Message and go home. Oh, but no, you got to worship. No, we we, we got to worship. Well, you preach the right message, people are going to worship before and after on their own. <laughs> and I didn't know about Charlie Rose, by the way. And he definitely has. It, it's sad when people do use their title for negative things. That's really See, sad. now that guy, you got to respect them, though. He admitted it, right? He did it? He admitted it. What's better than that? So you saw, now that's good. I wouldn't be surprised to see him in heaven. Yeah, that is good. It, it leaves closure. I think when they admit it, come, it, it doesn't prolong. They don't have to figure it out. They don't have to search for more people. And then when more people come out, it's like. When you get into the whole, when you get into the whole spiritual, religious thing, there's some people who honestly believe that the more people they kick out of heaven, like the, they treat it like it's Black Friday, heaven like Black Friday. (laughs) Like Black Friday has a certain amount of, let's say, flat screen. Ah! And people, people believe with heaven, like, there's only like 12, you know, flat screens that's going to be available. So you guys got to get here early. And it's everything else after that. We got them, but they're going to go back to the normal price. And people believe, like, oh, yep, yeah, you can't go to heaven doing that. Nope, you cannot go to heaven. Like, they're going to get into heaven, not knowing that your judgment can lead you to not getting in heaven. So that would be like you going to Black Friday, you waiting, uh, you waiting in line early, you getting the TV, and then when you get in line, to pay for your TV that only a few people had, you get in line. When you get in line, they say, uh, wait, you have a hat on? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, excuse me? Uh, security? Yeah, they have a hat on. We're going to give this television. We Hello? Get on loudspeaker. Yes, we have one more 42-inch flat screen. And they're getting escorted out. That's what certain people believe. Like, how do we believe that you're just, you're telling, 
How do you tell someone that they're not getting into heaven, but you 100% believe that that does not affect your way of getting into heaven? I would be scared. That's why I don't tell people they go into heaven, they're not going to heaven. Yeah, I mean, that's, you don't know, and people don't know anyway. Anybody who says that is probably not going. <laughs> like, that's how I feel about judging. I'm not saying they will or they won't, but to think that it's not going to affect you 100%, like, your judgment on no others is not going to affect you 100%. To say that. Well, apparently they do. I've heard, I mean, you've never heard somebody tell somebody that they're not going to heaven? No, I've heard that's actually a like a like a like a coin term. You're going to hell. There you go. Some people say it in fun. Some people say it not. That, in that fun. ain't that ain't. See again. See back to my original point. You said some people say that in fun. That's not good. No, it's not. Some people say, "Girl, you're going to hell for that one." And there's a big difference between you're not good for saying that, and I'm saying that's not good. That right there. That's not good. Mm. That's certain things you don't play around. Certain things you just don't play around with. But, again, see, you could pray in Jesus' name. I'll pray for you. You're in my prayers. And then people just doing some shifty-ass shit. Look at, look at what's happening in Hollywood. Here we are celebrating all these people and how, look at all these beautiful women they get. Oh, my gosh, they live the life. Look at all of these. (laughs) They're just over. Look, they're bowing to, see, once you have money, you can get any. Well, well, that's kind of true. Once you do have money, you can get whatever you want. However, these women apparently aren't just rushing to these men just because they have money. Mm-mm. There's something else going on in there. So for all the men and all the women, look, we was just feeling bad about ourselves. Like, man, I wish I could get that woman. Oh man, I wish I could get that guy. But they not. They getting forced. But look at what's happening. Man, I know that guy is getting a lot of girls. Man, look at that. And he's good looking. <laughs> mm. That's so wrong. Wow. And he and she's good. Man, she's so ooh. This is just the beginning. I've said that before. There's going to be more and more names coming out. Russell Simmons, they just brought out, right? You see, oh, man, he's so but, old. But How does he have all these young women? True. Yeah, so did Michael Jackson. Uh, you think Michael Jackson did it? Stop it. He did not do it. Anyway, if he did. The second time, those are the Everybody says they didn't do it. You didn't see Shawshank Redemption? Yeah, I did. He did say Every, that. Uh, everybody says they didn't do everybody it. Everybody That's the camouflage. That'll but give someone, you a break. But, come on. we got to be reasonable. You know people. who didn't do it? You know who didn't do it? Bill Cosby. <laughs> you know who didn't do it? Who? All of Jesus' friends. All of them. There's not one person that got punched in the face, got stabbed, got swarded down to stop him from what was happening to him. Not one of them. They disrespected him, didn't listen to him for everything else that he told them to do. So even if somewhere biblically there's a scripture that says, well, you know what? Jesus told them not to do anything because he knew where he was going. Well, Jesus also told them, remember he left and go in the city and he said, hey, I need you guys just to simply pray. When he came back, they were sleeping. So they obviously don't listen to what he's saying. Right. That's who didn't do something. Mm. And Khalif. Uh, Khalif brought it. That's a whole nother different story. <laughs> I said, I said, I didn't got it at that deal. He said, no, no, no. I get out here the right way. Right. So that's the thing. We complicate and we, we, we fog the mirrors with so many things 
that it's like I originally asked you, like, if you put a sane person in a group of 10 insane people, it's very difficult to be able to decipher if that person's sane or not. Yeah. Because they're in the group. And, or eventually, like Steve Harvey says, you know, if you have nine broke friends, same thing as crazy. If you have nine crazy friends, if the nine people you hang around with most often is crazy, you eventually going to become crazy. You'll be the tenth one. <laughs> it's not just broke. It's not just money. You have nine fat friends, guess what? You eventually, you'll be the tenth one. You have nine negative friends, you'll be the tenth one. The only problem with being the tenth one is you don't know it. Kind of like the frog story I always tell, right? You're just adapting to your environment. <laughs> like they all crazy. And who's gonna well, win? Who, who, who's gonna win? See the not the the tenth broke person. All they're gonna do is they're gonna just be like, "Yo, y'all, you y'all crazy. Like y'all don't have no money. Y'all don't, listen. Y'all gotta do this." You got to do this. You got to do this. They got to yeah, like, yo, y'all know what you're talking about. You stupid, man. Yeah, come over here. Come over to my birthday party. Come on, <laughs> come on. Let's, come on, come on. Let's go to the mall. Let's go to the store. All right, all right, man. I ain't giving you no money, though. I ain't giving you no money. <laughs> so do you think if you hang around a bunch of millionaires, the same effect will happen? Yeah, but the only difference is that people ask me that all the time. It's like, well... Yeah, it, it will, right? But you, you're on a very short string. If you flip it, you're on a very short string. So, all right, you hang around with nine broke people, you'll be the tenth one. You hang around with, if you're broke and you hang around nine very, like, millionaires, you're on a short string. It's very hard for a minority to become the majority. It's very hard. But Black people not, is like the rare exception. <laughs> that's not fair. Why is it not fair? You're on a short string. That's not fair because... Listen, I know this. When I make... It, when I'm sitting on millions, right? I don't have... I, I know the downsides of it. So, you trying to take my time... And you're not delivering on what you say you're going to do. I'll help you. But you're not going to have a long time period to do it. The the more you don't do what you say you're going to do, the further we're going to be apart. And that's what the guy T-Money the Icon was talking about on the podcast as well, right? Mm-hmm. That's exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, but won't eventually it you will adapt and learn just like you would in a negative environment or a broke environment. Mm. Oh, you got to what whose habits are stronger, broke people's or people with money? I think a person who is the minority, if there's 10, if there's 9 millionaires and one broke person, the 9 millionaires are going to be stronger than the broke person. They're not going to give them a whole bunch of time if that person is trying not to be broke. I mean, not saying not a lot of time, but if they're trying to become the majority. Right, you're talking about goes. them being a fly on the wall, right? Right, they're learning. Okay, you're just a fly on the wall. Okay, listen, a fly on the wall is a great metaphor because a fly on the wall can exist forever as long as it doesn't bother you, as long as it doesn't affect you. I'll let you live forever. You you stay away from me. You don't buzz in my ear. You don't get on my food. You don't go inside my drink. You can stay here forever. I mean, if the door's open, the window's open, you want to go out, hey, free. you're free to go. But <laughs> if you bother him, you can't get, you see, a fly on the wall really has to be a fly on the wall. You have to not bother nobody. Do what you're here to do. Learn what you're here to learn. And just, you know, that's it. A fly on the wall is a perfect example. 
That's why the door is open, the window is open. There's always a way to get out. Mm -hmm. You can't be a fly on the wall and be bothering people. Yeah, because a fly can be annoying. Right. Yeah, and flies can are easy to kill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me get that swat swatter. <laughs> All right, out of here. <laughs> that is a good metaphor. Very interesting. That's Very why when great. I'm around successful people, I I'm sh I shut up. I ain't said shit until they ask me. The fly on the wall. Yeah, you want some of this? You want the rest of this? Okay, good. I'm not asking, can I have some of that? I'm not assuming I can have some of that. Mm -mm. Right. I'm just a fly on the wall. You can ask. It's here. I'm just here. I mean, if you leave it there and you say, yo, you can have this, then boom, I'll take it. But other than that, I'll starve. I just want to be a fly on the wall. I just want to learn. Some people say they want to be, I wish I could be a fly on the wall with Bill Gates in his office. All right? No, you don't. He might mess around and kill you. <laughs> you said kill you? That's what I do. I don't bother flies. Until they become annoying. You bothering me, then, yeah, you're affecting what I'm doing. Then, yeah, you have to die. A lot of people say that's how they killed Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Because he wasn't a fly on the wall? Well, no, because he was, was messing up what people were doing. They were playing yeah. Same thing with the Kennedys, and the Kennedys supported that. Yeah, so he had, they had to go too. Yeah, so that's the key. Hmm. Yeah. So if you're going to be a fly, just stay on the wall. Or you can get squashed. <laughs> but you should be, you should be still to learn so that you can be comfortable. Yeah, but sometimes when you learn, you want to talk. <laughs> yeah, that's the hard part. You do want to talk. I know. If you're a fly on the wall, you have to remain a fly on the wall to invite it to do something else. Right. You don't just assume. Because remember, you're a minority. It's an honor, it's a privilege for you to be here. Right. Mm. Why do you block people on social media? I don't block many people. I don't think I have anybody I didn't blocked. say how many you block. I, well, hey, I block people. I just saw on one of my friends' page just yesterday, they said they have 15 people blocked. How many do you? And I didn't read the whole rest, but people was commenting. Uh, you block people because they're in your space, messing up your groove, killing your vibe. Yeah. And it's a, a privilege. That's why when you send a request, it says what? accept or decline. You ever see that video with that guy? He put, you ain't got to be stressed out at 27. You ain't got to be stressed out. <laughs> right. Oh, you want to talk to and be all negative on my post? Block that bitch. <laughs> Are you trying to sit in direct vibe? Block that bitch. <laughs> it is so funny, the guy who did it. Yeah, so that's the key. Block that bitch. Say with yourself. <laughs> you ask like, yo, wait. You doing too much. I thought you you just wanted to be a fly on the wall. Oh, you 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 talking now? Oh, oh you try. Oh, you, you, you my vibe. That's what I you want my food on. now. <laughs> Are you taking food off my plate? Oh, we ain't that comfortable. Right. You said you just wanted to be a fly on the wall. My food ain't on the wall. Mm. You over here. 
I even said you can fly around. <laughs> Just don't come in my space. 